All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome. This is lesson 3-2. Uh, it should be, it's actually gonna be really heavily involved with the graphing calculator. So if you guys don't have one at home, make sure you go to desmos.com, that's D-E-S-M-O-S, um, and let's get started. Um, bell work is required again and for chapter three, so please make sure you fill it out in the worksheet. All right, here are the answers. Um, first one here is standard form, add two X to both sides. And standard form is AX plus BY equals uh, C. So it'd be 2X plus Y equals negative 9. This is not in standard form uh, because of the XY part right here. And then lastly, you plug in a 15 here, uh, 15 times W, and you'd get your total charge, which is $90.25. Um, we are going to be doing some more modeling today. Uh, we're basically going to graph linear equations um, to find the x-intercepts and to find all of the zeros of linear functions and we're going to start modeling. Um, on your notes, you will have some vocabulary words. Uh, basically, it's what a linear function is, what a parent function is. Uh, here's a parent function. The parent function is just x itself. And so if you were to graph just x on a graphing calculator, it would come across as just a horizontal line that passes at the origin and its slope is just one, so it's going up and down. Um, find the zeros of each linear function by graphing. So all we do is go into Desmos, and we're gonna graph these two equations, or if you have the graphing calculator at home, and find out where does it cross the x-axis. So on this, ladies and gentlemen, here is the first equation set up. Um, there's number one, and here's the second one. So where does it cross the x-axis? Here's the advantage. So I'm not sure why all of you at the beginning of the year when I said let's use Desmos, that you had a slight panic attack. Um, this is actually a great tool to use and probably easier to use than most calculators. So for the first equation, which is in red, our x-intercept is negative six, zero. And the blue one, which is the second equation, the x-intercept is negative three. That's all I'm looking for today. If I asked you for the y-intercept, you just click on the line and you'd give me the y-intercept as well. Uh, pretty simple. So what I wanna make sure you guys can do now is as a function, tell me where these x-intercepts are on the graph. All right, so on these, if you just simply go to Desmos again, graph these two in the graphing calculators. We can talk about how to make sure you guys do the fractions correctly. Um, and that's it. So on this first one, um, the first one is green, the two fifths uh, plus X. If you put that in, uh, you would get your calculator to come across. Your X intercept would be negative 15. Okay, and then the other uh, equation, the X intercept would be two and a half or two, actually 2.4. So please make sure, if you guys struggle with this, let me know, but um, on Desmos to enter a fraction, hopefully you guys have figured it out, it's just two divided by five. So you just hit the divided by sign and it'll automatically put a fraction and then make sure you hit the space button or the net over. So that way the X doesn't end up in the denominator, otherwise it will. And then the, you will get a quadratic, which will be the incorrect graph. Um, next, pretty simple, uh, Maria. She goes 420 miles on a tank of gas. Here's the equation. It describes the distance. Find the zero and describe what it means in the context of the situation. And then finally, identify the domain and range described in their significance. So we had talked about earlier in the year, domain is going to be the X, or I made a wrestling analogy of DX. And the range is the Y, R, Y. So let's go ahead and graph this. And I'll tell you kind of the context of what I want. So here is the equation. So uh, it is actually quite a big one. Um, and so what you guys need to understand is the context of the equation is basically simply this. When she starts off, she can go 420 miles uh, total. And then as she drives and uses her gas, okay, she re loses her every, per gallon of gas, she loses her mileage basically throughout the day. And then what happens is, is when she reaches zero gas in her tank, all right, you have your calculation set up. 
So X in this case is 35. So what this means is that her average gas intake for miles is 35 miles per gallon. So if she were to start driving on Desmos, you can actually drag, click and drag along, and you can kind of see for every time, every gallon of gas that she uses, you can kind of see where she's at and left. And so the context of this situation for here, okay, is that, and I'll give you the domain of it, okay, is the context for her is that she um, can go 35 miles per gallon. She starts at 0420, and as she drives, she starts to lose basically gallons of gas in her car. Um, what is the domain and range? All right, here is the domain and range. So this is what I wanna make sure you guys can please write down. Here's the domain. I do want you guys to write it in brackets like this to get used to it now, so that when you get to algebra two, you can do it later. And then here is the range. So please make sure you write that down as well. All right, so you guys can see she is 35 miles to the gallon. Here's the domain and range. Go from there. So here is Chi, or C H E. I don't know how to say his name. All right, he can dive, and it talks about describes the amount of air in his tank after X minutes, find the zeros, and describe what it means in the context of the situation. Identify the domain and the range. All right. So let us. So what you're going to want to do is, if you guys look as an example back here, domain is going to be D equals. All right, and then you have the X. So our domain, domain on this one is going to be D equals, and then you got to do the little annotation, which I can never do. Everybody made fun of me last year, and I'm okay with that. Uh, um, <laughs> X, all right, and then you want to have your range. So we do our range equals Y, and then it's zero Y. And then you end up at the bend. So let's look at the end. You basically close the graph. So let me backdate this one a little bit. So here is the end of the graph. And so what you want to do is try to find out the context. So if you look at this domain, okay, the domain of this function went from 0 to 35. You remember on the graph. So if we go to our function here, and our next, this function is 120 to 2 uh, minus x. So what we have here is we have our x value and we have our y. So the domain of this function is actually 0 to 60. The domain of this is 0 to 60, so this would be 60 right here. And then the range. That is the seventh hour bell. The range of this, ladies and gentlemen, would be the top point, which is 120. So please make sure you guys put that in there. Range is 120. And so what does this mean? Well, what it means is as you're reading this graph, this gentleman starts off with 120. Um, he can basically start off with 120 gallons, or I guess you could say the pressure in the air uh, in the amount of his tank. And as he started to dive, after the minutes started to occur, he basically had 60 minutes that he could dive for before he ran out of air. That's the context of what you wanna try and find here, okay? So he started off with a full tank and it's at 120, and as he starts to dive, he can dive a total of 60 minutes before he completely runs out of air. Um, that is kind of what we're looking for when I'm asking you guys this stuff, okay? Uh, Kendra's class is selling greeting cards to raise money. Here's the equation. They paid $115 for the cards and are selling them for $1.75 each. This represents their profit Y for the greeting cards. Find the zero, describe what it means, and then identify the domain and the range. So we're going to graph this function. And when you graph it, you can kind of see that it appears that her... Uh, profit starts at, uh, or the domain, excuse me, starts at 65. So when we do graph this, um, let me see where it's at exactly. It's at 65.714. So what this means is that in order for them to actually make profit, they have to start selling cards. And once they sell 66 cards, they have actually broken even. Because here's the graph down here. It starts at negative 115. So this is how much money they've spent. 
And as they sell these cards, their profit starts to increase, but they don't actually break even or hit the zero until they hit 66. So that's one thing that you guys need to understand when it comes to it, okay? The domain of this would be zero, is any number that is uh, greater than zero because that's the reality of the situation. The reality is, is when you're looking at this is that they're gonna sell cards, anything greater than zero, and it's gonna keep going up, all right, any X value. And then the range of this function is, it's gonna start at negative 15. So the range is any number Y value greater than negative 15. Last, but certainly not least, Antonio's class is selling candy to raise money for the class trip. They paid $45 for the candy, selling them for $150 each. <laughs> what is the function? The function is y equals 1.5x minus 45, and that's how they're selling the candy bars. Describe what it means. Last graph. I go on Desmos and I graph it, ladies and gentlemen. I find the x-intercepts, okay? What it's telling me is, the x values are any number greater than x. So the domain of this function, all right, if I go back in here and I do the domain, and remember it looks like that, so the domain is gonna be this little thing, x, and x is greater than or equal to zero, okay? So it's any greater, it's any value greater than zero. I make sure you erase that, I did that one wrong. And it's this thing. All right, and then what is the um, connotation of the range? The range, all right, is y, and that is going to be is greater than or less than any number greater than, if you look at your graph again, negative 45. That's the number we're shooting for here, whoops. So it'd be negative 45, that is the range. And what it means, so you have to interpret this graph, when we look at this graph, we can tell that Antonio, he spends $45, but he doesn't make a profit until he sells 30 candy bars. So that's the concept of it, all right? When you find and finish off the equation, that's what you're looking for. Find the zero and describe what it means. It means that he has to sell at least 30 candy bars to make a profit, and then after that, you could see um, how, he did how he was successful after that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was it for this one. It's kind of a short one and we graphed a lot. So please make sure you guys know how to do, use Desmos. And if you have any questions, please come see me in uh, class. The homework should be in the comment section of the YouTube video, um, but I also should have it posted on Canvas by then. In the next time, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day and I'll see you in class.